previously in the previous video is actually create a database. So we have Rails installed, but we actually need to run Rails DB create. And that should go ahead and create both the testing and development database. Okay, so the databases were both created. Now let's just make sure that Rails was actually installed uh, successfully. So we'll run Rails and then S. You could also do Rails server, but Rails S is the same thing. Okay, it looks like Rails booted up. So if we go to local host 3000, we should see the, the basic um, default Rails landing page. So this is good. And this lines up with what we set up in the previous video. So we have the latest version of Rails and we're running it on Ruby version 2.7.1. So now that we know that Rails is installed, I'm gonna go ahead and install Bootstrap and that's gonna be for our UI. And I wanna keep this workflow as realistic as possible. So before I even do anything, I'm actually gonna jump into my repository and I'm gonna make a new branch called Bootstrap. Now that that branch is created, I'm gonna go into my terminal and I'm gonna close out the server real quick. And I'm gonna run git fetch and or actually git fetch. And that's gonna pull in the latest um, branch that I just created. Or it'll, it'll make it so that my local repository is aware of that remote branch. So now that it, it knows that this bootstrap branch is created, so now if we do git checkout bootstrap and then run git branch, I can see that I'm on the bootstrap branch. So now I can actually start working on installing and configuring bootstrap. So the next thing we want to do is actually install bootstrap and its dependencies, which are jQuery and Popper. Rails comes with, or Rails uses Yarn by default to install any node packages. So we'll use Yarn add bootstrap jQuery and hopper.js and we'll let these install. Looks like everything installed. We can actually run git diff and see what changes were actually made. So or actually git status do a little easier overview. So package.json and yarn.lock were both updated. And let's see, you can see that popper, jQuery, and bootstrap were all added. So the next thing we want to do is go in and actually wire everything up. And this part can be a little tricky. So in the past, I've used the Go Rails example. Um, I think this is a really good walkthrough on how to get everything set up. So essentially what I'm doing is doing what Chris Oliver did in his video. Um, and I should also point out, because I wanna make this course as realistic as possible, like this is what real developers do. They don't always remember every single step involved to, to do something. So I wrote up a post right here that walks through how to actually do what I'm about to do. And instead of trying to remember every single step, I am not only in this video, but in other videos, I'm gonna go to the documentation pages, go to other, other blog posts or Stack Overflow posts and use those as resources to get going because that's how an actual developer builds a real world application. So we just ran this, this code. The next thing we wanna do is update um, the Webpack environment file. And where is that? Okay, so by default, it looks like this. And we wanna add these plugins. So Webpack is aware of jQuery and Popper. And before I go too far, 
I want to give some context to this. So I actually got this from the Webpacker documentation. Um, I got that, well, I, I got it from the documentation and also Chris Oliver's video, but I like to be able to reference this documentation too. So what we really need is to, we need to add this line up here. Don't need to worry about this. And then we can add these additional plugins down here. Um, we don't need to be worried about view or action cable. So this should be good. Let me just make sure it lines up with that. Next thing we want to do is, and this is always kind of strange, but we want to add a SAS file, but we want to add it under app JavaScripts and have it under there. So we're not actually going to use the asset pipeline for this. We're going to install our styles uh, under the JavaScript library or under the JavaScript directory and that's because Webpacker will be able to pull the JavaScript or the, or the styles from in here and actually like minify it and do all these other things to it that are important but it's it's kind of a weird thing to do if you're not used to it so I'm gonna make a new folder called style sheets and then within there or actually I'm gonna rename that I spelled that wrong style Sheets. Okay, and then under there, application.scss. And then in here, I should be able to load in Bootstrap. Now, this is just the styles. And we can do this because, or the reason we're doing it as a SAS file is because we can override the Bootstrap default variables doing it this way which is always helpful. So Bootstrap comes with default variables like color and um, well, color is probably the most important one that you'd want to change. So by doing it this way, you can easily change those color variables. And the next thing we want to do is go into our application.js file and this gets loaded. Application. So in here, is this JavaScript pack tag and it's going to load in application which in this case is application.js so all this JavaScript gets loaded through that so we want to require bootstrap and then Oh yeah, that's another thing too. See, this is this is why I'm just referencing something I did earlier. We also want to import the style sheet tag that we just made. So import, and if I do, yeah, I can do it this way. Style sheets. There we go. So that's imported. And yeah, it's just, it's still a weird concept to me, but this JavaScript file will pull in this SAS file and it'll know how to handle it. The next thing we want to do is load in tooltips and popper everywhere. To do that, we are turbo links load. Let me grab this right here. So I'm getting these both of these lines from the Bootstrap documentation. So if I scroll down here. This line loads tooltips everywhere, and if I and it's the same for um, the popover. The reason I'm wrapping it around turbo links load and not um, document ready is because rails uses a package called turbo links 
which affects how pages are loaded. So typically you want to wrap things with a turbo length load instead of listening for the document to actually be loaded. And finally, I think we just want to application dot. The last thing we want to do is just add a style sheet pack tag. And that will take care of this file right here. And I think that's it for getting this set up. The only other thing we want to do is add this viewport. And that's for bootstrap. That's just so it's mobile friendly. Now we have everything installed, but we don't actually have any pages yet. Oh, and actually, you know what I, what I really should do is I should make a commit here. So so I'm going to make this commit right here. It's always a good habit to just commit early and commit often. So that's that's been committed. So the next thing you want to do is actually make a page or home page because right now there's there's no pages in our app. And we can do that by making a controller. So if you do Rails generate, G stands for generate, controller, static pages, home, no assets. So what this is going to do, it's going to make a controller called static pages. And then within that, there will be one that's called home. And I'm passing in no assets because we're going to use style. We're not going to use the asset pipeline for style sheets in this application. And if I did not run this, it would add a style sheet for or, or a SAS file for this controller, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just not necessary. So that generated these files. So the next thing we want to do is I want to go into our routes. You can see here it already made this route, but we, what I want to actually do is make this the home page. So root to static pages home. This is a Ruby method that just sets up the home page. And you can actually see it if you go here. See right down here, using root, root to, there you go. Oh, actually, look at that shortcut. Maybe I'll even do that. Yeah, that's cool. See, learn something new every day. Um, always important to check out the docs. So I've always been doing it this way. Looks like I can take out the, the word to. Next, let's go into the, next we want to add some content to the actual home page. So this got loaded in from the generator. And actually, you know what, let's run Rails server to make sure everything's wired up in terms of the root path. Okay, so this works. This is the new home page. You can tell that Bootstrap is actually applying these styles here. But to really make sure, let's go in and add code that has to do with tooltips modals and popovers. Copy that. Okay. This is good. So everything's loading. Tooltips are loading. Modal is loading and popovers are loading. So this is awesome. So now let's just commit this. Create a sample home page. Finally let's push it up.
And if I go back to my repository, it actually says Bootstrap, which is the branch we made, has recent changes. So we can actually go ahead and compare and pull and make a pull request. So I'm going to just change this to install and figure bootstrap and dependencies. And I'm merging it into master. We'll go ahead and create this. And I'm going to merge this in. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this branch. And now if I go back to my repository, it's on master and bootstrap is no longer there, but we can see that there's more commits here. So this looks like a good place to leave off.